Okay, <clears throat> lesson 5.5 today. Feels like I haven't done a video in quite a while. Hopefully it hasn't been too long since you've watched one. But uh, we're going to talk about inequalities in one triangle. So what do we mean by inequalities? We mean less thans and greater thans and things like that. So um, you're not going to be able to deal with equations right, where we have an equal sign in there. But we're going to be saying something is greater than something else or something is less than something else. Okay. Uh, we're actually going to do three different videos for this lesson. Um, try to keep them somewhat short by doing that. So we've got two theorems in this one. Theorem 5.10, I don't have any of it written out yet because in the book it's really long. And I'm going to try to shorten it up for you a little bit. And then we have the same idea with Theorem 5.11. It's really long in the book and I'm going to try to shorten it up for you. Okay, so I'm going to read Theorem 5.10 out of the book to you and I'm going to shorten it up for you. And then we're going to write down what the kind of the shortened version is. So in the book it says if one side of a triangle is longer than another side. So let's draw that out. We've got a triangle here and we've got a side that is longer than another side. So maybe this side right here is longer than this side over here. Okay. Then the angle opposite the longer side is larger than the angle opposite the shorter side. Okay. So if this side is longer than this side, then we work across to our angles and we can say that this angle is bigger than that angle. All right, you guys remember when we drew those arrows, all right, for isosceles triangles? Okay, you guys kind of remember this? And if these were congruent, okay, we came across, we said that angle is congruent to that angle. Okay, that was our base angle theorem for isosceles triangles. Okay, that's what's going on here, except that we don't have congruent marks. So if they are congruent, then we lead to congruent angles. If they're not congruent, then they lead to non-congruent angles. And if the angles aren't congruent, then we should be able to say that one of them is bigger than the other one. Okay, so here's basically what our theorem says. In a triangle, so this only works in one triangle, not two separate triangles. In a triangle, the biggest angle is across you could say opposite across from the biggest side. And the smallest angle is across from the smallest side. Okay. And then obviously that would leave us with the medium angle, okay, or the middle angle, if you want to say middle instead, that's fine, is across from the medium side. Okay, so let's take a look at this triangle. Let's put some numbers on the sides. So maybe 5 and 8 and 10. And I'm going to call this A and B and C. All right. So what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to tell you which triangle or sorry, which angle in the triangle is the biggest and which one's the smallest and so on. So, smallest side go across. So angle C is the smallest angle. So let's list these angles from smallest to largest. Okay, so we're going to list the angles in this triangle from smallest to largest. So, smallest side, we work our way across, get points over there to angle C, so angle C is the smallest. Okay, now which side is the medium side? Well, definitely the 8, right? So, we work our way across from the 8, and that takes us over to angle A. And then the biggest one is 10, so that works us across over there to angle B. So there we go, angle C is the smallest. Angle A is in the middle, and angle B is the biggest. Now, you could also write it this way. Remember, at the beginning, I said we might be using less than signs and so on. So we could say that the measure of angle C is less than the measure of angle A, which is less than the measure of angle B. Now, if we're using equals, remember we used to use the M for measure, same thing. If we use greater than or less than, we have to use the M for measure. So if we just want to list them, we can do that with commas, just kind of listing them out. Or we can actually write it as an inequality with less than sign. So this is the smallest, it's less than this one. This is less than this one. 
transitive property does work, so angle C is less than angle B as well. Okay, but smallest, medium, biggest. That's it. Theorem 5.10 is a pretty easy theorem. Okay? Let's look at Theorem 5.11. It is the converse of Theorem 5.10. So in this theorem, I gave you the side lengths. Down here, I'm going to give you the angle measurements. All right, so let's draw another triangle. Okay, I'll call this X and Y and Z. Okay, now once again, I'm going to read this out of the book, and then I'm going to kind of change it a little bit. So in the book, it says, if one angle of a triangle is larger than another angle, then the side opposite the larger angle is longer than the side opposite the smaller angle. Same idea. Remember back with isosceles triangles again, we had a converse to the base angle theorem. And it said that if these two angles are congruent, then I can draw my arrows and those two sides would have to be congruent. So here we worked from the sides toward the angles. That's what we were doing here. Here we work from the angles toward the sides. That's what we're going to do here. So instead of saying in a triangle the biggest angle is across from the biggest side, we're doing a converse. So in a triangle, the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. Once again, this only works in a triangle. We're talking one triangle. Okay? In a triangle, the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. The smallest side is across from the smallest angle. And make sure you can get that whole sentence there on the screen. Okay, and then the theorem doesn't really mention it, but we can talk about the medium one as well. The medium side is across from the medium angle. Or you could say middle instead of medium if you want to. All right, so let me put some numbers up here. So let's say that this is like 75 degrees. Maybe this is uh, 55 degrees. 75 plus 55 is 130, so at least 50 over here. All right, so we're going to list the sides from smallest to biggest. All right, so smallest angle, 50 degrees. Takes me over here to this side. Remember to name a side, I use two letters. So XY is my smallest side. 55 is my medium, so I come over here. That takes me to YZ, so that's my medium side. And then my biggest angle leads me down here to X, Z, so that's my biggest side. Okay, now, just like we did up here, instead of using commas, we can use less than signs or greater than signs. So to do that, we say X, Y is less than Y, Z, which is less than X, Z. Once again, transitive property works, so X, Y is also less than X, Z. Now you'll notice, I did not put the segment symbols over the top. Remember when we said something like X, Y equals five, okay? Uh, we didn't put the bar over the top. We do the same thing when we're talking about less than and greater than. Remember, without the little sig uh, segment symbol over the top, it's talking about a length. So really what we're saying here is the length of this is less than the length of this, which is less than the length of this. And a length is a number. And with numbers, we can use less than signs and greater than signs. Okay, so once again, this theorem is supposed to be pretty easy. All right, I'm going to give you two examples to do, one for each theorem, and then we're going to be done with this video. So I want you to copy that triangle onto your paper, and I want you to try it real quick. I want you to list the sides from smallest to largest. Okay, list the sides from smallest to largest. That's a 70, and that's a 30. Okay, so I want you to list the sides from smallest to largest. Pause the video, do it, check, come back, check your answer. All right, hopefully you figured out this one pretty quick. Now, the only problem here, we don't know angle B. So, let's think about how we would find angle B. We know that all three angles in a triangle have to add up to equal what? That's right, 180 degrees. 
So 70 plus 30 is 100. And then 180 minus 100 leaves me with 80 degrees right here. Okay. So if you didn't figure out that there was an 80 degree angle up there, that, that makes this problem a little bit harder. So if you didn't figure that out, now pause it and then redo your work because that might change things a little bit. All right. Okay, so I'm going sides. I want the smallest side first. So I start with my smallest angle, 30. I work over here. It puts me at AB. 70 is my medium angle, so I come over here. That's BC. All right, 80 is my biggest angle. I come down here to my biggest side. That's AC. So you could write it like that with the segment symbols, or if you did it with the less than signs, AB is less than BC which is less than AC. Pretty simple. Okay, it's not too difficult. All right, let's do the next example. So I got this triangle with a seven and an eight and a 10. Okay, copy it down. And in this case, I want you to list the angles from smallest to largest. Okay, list the angles from smallest to largest. Pause the video, do it real quick, come back, check your answer. All right, here we go. Smallest side, coming over to here. Smallest angle, so angle Z is my smallest. Medium, coming over here. Medium, angle Y. Biggest, biggest. All right, now, you could have used less than, but remember, if you use less than, you need to use the M for measure. So the measure of angle Z is less than the measure of angle Y, which is less than the measure of angle X. Now there's one kind of cool thing about this triangle which we are not going to learn in this lesson. We may not learn it all this year. Okay, but we can actually figure out the exact measurements of these angles. Okay, I can find the exact measurement of angle Y and angle X and angle Z using something called trigonometry. We are going to learn about trigonometry in another chapter but we may not get to this part of trigonometry. Most of the tri uh, trigonometry we do is only with right triangles. This is not a right triangle, okay? But there is something called the law of sines and the law of cosines, okay? You don't know what sine and cosine are yet, but we're gonna teach that to you later on. But if we were to use the law of cosines and the law of sines, we could find the exact measurement of each of these three angles. And for most of you, you'll end up learning that in another class probably. Okay, but that's the end of the first video for lesson 5.5. So biggest sides across from the biggest angle, and it works backwards, the biggest angles across from the biggest side. Smallest angles across from the smallest side, also works backwards, smallest sides across from the smallest angle, and then we can throw that medium one in there too. Medium angles across from the medium side, and the medium side is across from the medium angle. Pretty easy theorems to use usually they don't show up in proofs. It's more just this type of thing where it says list these angles from smallest to largest. They could try to throw a little you know, uh, trick on you there almost and say largest to smallest. So just be careful. If they did that, we'd have to use greater than signs here instead. Okay, that's it for this lesson or for this video, um, part one of this lesson, not for the whole lesson.